Hey, it's Joe Ferro with Geek Toolkit, and recently I built a magic mirror. And of course, as I did it, I did a bunch of stuff wrong, and I want to take all of the learnings I have and hand that off to you, the viewer. That way, if you're looking to build a magic mirror, you can use these tips to build a better magic mirror, not make the mistakes I did, be aware of some things I wasn't aware of, and I'll also go into how it works, a bit about the mirror, um, the mirrors themselves, how they work, and the software, how to install and configure it, and some tips on how to make it easier to handle. So that'll cover the 10 tips I'm gonna go over today. The first thing is I had a bit of sticker shock. I've seen a couple of videos of people putting these things together, but I didn't really understand how much they cost. And so when I went to go pick out my mirror, I, I built a three foot by two foot mirror and I picked up a piece of acrylic from a company called Tap Plastics. It was $75 for this mirror. Now I was thinking the monitor was going to be the most expensive part. And since I had a old monitor laying around that I was going to use that this whole project would be pretty inexpensive. But in reality, I was at about $200 when I had everything said and done. I've listed here various things so you can get an idea of some options. Things like a frame you can do yourself. You can cut 45s on some cheap wood. I bought mine. It was basically uh, a picture frame that had the innards out of it. And that gave me nice molded edges, but it was a $35 part. The Raspberry Pi is actually, you know, I listed it as $35, but I need to start listing it as 50 because when you put a micro SD card, power supply, HDMI cable on there, that stuff starts adding up. I had a video adapter because I was using a DVI port, so that was $7. And I bought a passive infrared sensor. Now, pro tip on buying components like this, the passive infrared sensor I'll talk more about in a second, but if I were to buy one of them, they were $8. But if I were to buy five of them, they were $10. One for eight, five for 10. Now, the mirror itself, I left for the last on purpose. I said $75, but there is a way to do it for $30. You're gonna trade off the quality of the mirror though, if you do that. The technique is basically to use a film and you roll the film onto a piece of glass, you press it down, and then you've got, um, you've got a mirror. Something to understand about how these work, and I'll, I'll go into this more in a second, is that a magic mirror uses what's called a two-way mirror. So this is a MS Paint image that's got areas of black, areas of white, and then areas of color on it. And this is showing that the, the two-way mirror is actually transparent on both sides. It's also reflective on both sides, so it doesn't really matter what you place up here. When I place it against the black, what will happen is no light is now shining through the back, so it doesn't look transparent. You only see the reflective part. And the reflective part is about 50% reflective, but it's enough to be a decent mirror. When I place it over the light here, what's happening is that light gets a bit dimmer, but 50% of it is getting through the mirror, and that's what you know makes it show up in front. Any of the areas that are black are still reflective. Now this is from a show called Auto Man and it's a color image and what I want to show is what happens when you place this over it. It's going to get very dim and you're going to lose a lot of your image vibrancy. And the reason I did this experiment is I had a, a concept of what if I put a magic mirror over a uh, television screen and try to use it as like a hidden television. And I've seen people sell these but I think the thing that's not being said is you're going to lose some color and contrast when you do this. So. Anyway, I thought that was a cool demo of just kind of showing how these mirrors work and the effects they have on images and also showing how, you know, if you have something dark behind them, it's reflective. If you use white, it'll shine through. The next thing I want to talk about is power consumption, because this was my other big surprise. Again, I picked an old monitor out and I plugged it in the Raspberry Pi in and I just plugged it into a power measuring device. The thing took 30 watts. Now, what that translates to in money is $30 a year to run this. So in the next step, I'll talk about how to make it more power conscious using that PIR sensor, but it's something to keep in mind when you're picking out your parts and you're picking out your monitor. You might want to do a power measurement to see what you're at. Now, $30 a year or $10 a year, it's about a dollar a watt a year here in, the, in Washington. It doesn't sound like a lot, but if you're in Hawaii, it's about five times as much for power there. Or if you're in Germany, it's about three times as much. You can imagine if you build several projects like this and they're all each costing $100 a year, things can start adding up on the power bill. Besides that, it's just in a, it's irresponsible to waste energy. So the next thing, we'll talk about how to fix this. Now, if the monitor turns off, 
the power draw goes down to two watts and that's two dollars a year that's a great savings but to do that we need to be able to turn the monitor off and leave the raspberry pi on what i used is a passive infrared sensor what this does is you hook three wires from a passive infrared sensor into your raspberry pi it's very simple to do it's um you know kind of a one-time thing if you have a 3d printer you can even print little cases for it and then there's a module you install in the magic mirror modules um, or magic mirror software that will automatically set this up for you so that when you walk by it executes a command to turn the monitor on and then when you walk away and it doesn't detect motion 10 seconds later it powers the monitor down this means that the mirror is only on during the time that you're in front of it moving one way to test if this is going to work for the monitor when you're picking your monitor out you don't need anything except for the raspberry pi and the monitor you can run some of these command lines to see if you can turn the monitor off and then just as importantly turn it back on again from the raspberry pi now this is an alternative if you have a monitor that you can unplug and plug back in and it, when it's plugged in it will go into standby mode then this alternative would save you from wiring up that pir sensor now again the pir sensor was only three wires but if that intimidates you this right here is something that you plug in your wall and then you plug your monitor into it now one thing to note you don't want to plug your raspberry pi into it because what would happens with this is it actually cuts power after a certain amount of minutes when it doesn't detect motion this amount of minutes is set by a little switch on the back of it it can be like two five ten so on tip number four i just want to show you how this kind of works because when i approached the software i really didn't know where to start the magic mirror software has a very simple command line that installs the, the software onto your raspberry pi and that's great you launch raspberry pi go to the command line you launch you install that and you'll have a folder structure that has a magic mirror folder underneath it there's four or five different things but the two that you care about are the modules folder and the config folder the config folder has one file that you care about called config.js in that folder it will specify which um where things are placed and such and we'll talk about that more in the next slide in the modules folder the way this works is to install a module use git the tool git is able to pull code down from a server and place it um, into a folder that you're running it from so from their modules folder you would say git clone and a like a plugin or a module it will pull it down into the modules folder and place it where it needs to go then you go to the config folder and you add that module in a module is a little piece of um, functionality let's say so imagine like the weather or your time um, the the clock the uh, traffic could be one you might have your stocks sports scores um, you know uh, it, what the pollen count is all these little different things the beauty of magic mirror too is these modules can be written by third-party authors which makes it very powerful if somebody wants to support something that's like the tra transit system in Germany and they're in Germany they can go write their module and put it on to github and that makes it available for magic uh, magic mirror users to pull down onto their mirror and use that module the config file also allows you to configure what you want to show where and where to place things so it's a very powerful pluggable system this is a breakdown of that config.js file this isn't what it actually looks like but this is showing how it works you have the module um, structure where you have the name of the module and the have position and the position is what quadrant of the screen you want to place the module on then you have your config section where you do your settings for instance for weather you might have your zip code in the config section and that's what makes the weather module know that it's your weather I explained this because I couldn't when I was starting out with the software I just, again I just didn't know where to go to edit things and I didn't understand how the modules and the configs linked and this hopefully explanation will help you understand how to configure this when you get going or when you get started now I kept talking about module positions you can imagine that the screen is broken up into quadrants like the top left and top right and lower third and so on what you do is you specify one of these for where you want your module so if i want the weather to show up in my mirror in the top right corner i would say position top right for the weather module and up there it'll go here's what my screen looks like right now just to give me an idea of how the layout works with those different positions so i have in the top right my traffic in the bottom right are the sta sports standings the bottom left is my weather 
you can see uh, MMM tools, which I'll talk about later, which is the bars that uh, shows like my CPU usage and the IP address of the monitor. Upper left is my time and the rain forecast, which is very handy for me. And then dead center, the top bar, basically, I have a QR code that I'll talk about in a second. Tip number five is to turn off the screensaver. Now, I believe if you install Magic Mirror after you watch this video, this should all be taken care of for you. But if not, it's very important to understand what's going on here because what will happen is you might set up your mirror, you use it, you walk away, you come back the next day and it, you just get a black screen. And with a Magic Mirror, if you have a black screen on the monitor, the mirror just looks like it doesn't work at all. You just see a reflection. There's two ways to do this. Um, ThanksGeeks3D.com, they give some great tutorials on this. One is to install X Screensaver, which will allow you to have control over this. The other one is to go into your auto start script and basically issue these three commands. Here's a couple debugging tips that I wanna talk about because I had to dig through the forums a little bit and it's a little bit buried in the help, but they're very important. One of them is probably the most common thing you'll do when you're configuring this is corrupt your config.js file. When I say corrupt, it just means if you forget a comma, it will be considered corrupt. It's very, very strict on its formatting. So if that happens, run from the Magic Mirror folder, npm run config colon check, and then it will tell you what line number is corrupt. Then you can say type leafpad config.js and look through your um, config.js file. You can turn on line numbering, match that up with what your npm run came back with, and you should be able to find out what line is actually broken. The other thing is, if you have a module crash on you, or which may look like just a black screen or whatever, run pm2 logs mm and you'll get the magic mirror logs. Then you can look for the modules that are misbehaving and try disk, um, try uh, disabling them to see if that helps out with your stability or your mirror. So, some cool debug tips for you. How to install and update modules. This actually isn't so bad. You use the word uh, the git clone command and in the modules under help you'll see that they should specify the install command for each module. You run that from the modules folder and that will take the module from the internet and place it onto your your device. Then you go over to the config.js file folder and you add the module there. And again, for each module, these instructions should be included. But it's just important to know the workflow. Install on one side uh, into the modules folder, go to the config.js, edit it there, and the module will get brought back up again. One of the other pro tips, and I'm not gonna go into this too much, but you wanna have the IP address on the screen somewhere. Ideally, you know, small font kind of hidden but the MMM Tools plugin will do this for you. Uh, MMM Remote may also do it if you want, but this is super helpful for maintaining the screen because what it allows you to do is take your Windows or your Mac computer, use VNC, and bring the, the uh, screen up remotely. That allows you to edit things, and that is just a much better way to edit than to actually have to type on the screen itself. This next tip is uh, what I call the killer admin combo. When you want to administer your screen where you want to do things like reboot or if you want to add or remove a module, then the MMM remote is a super powerful module, but it requires you to type in the IP address and then slash remote.htm each time on your phone or on your device. What's cool about this is you can have a QR code on the mirror, which you saw in mine, it's dead center. I can scan that with my phone and it'll take me to the MMM remote app. And the way I did that is I configured the QR code module to take me to the IP address slash remote. Then I walk up to my mirror, scan the QR code, it brings up the admin interface on my phone, and then I can edit the mirror and walk away. And I don't have to you know, uh, use a computer for 90% of the stuff I wanna do on my mirror. It's a very nice way to do it. And the MMM remote app has a beta feature of installing modules, which is very time, it saves you so much time. You can almost like have an app store where you say, I want this module on the mirror, I want it in the upper right, and boom, it'll be there, so. Finally, tip 10, I, I don't mean this to be contentious, but the question is, do you really need a magic mirror? And the reason I say this is I was a bit disappointed when I first built it because I had the default config and the default modules there. And I looked at it and I was like, wow, it has weather 
and you know it has a clock and it has a calendar but so does my phone um, and my phone is always with me it's very glance and go it's always updated it uses less power costs a lot less money and it's not a project so I kind of had to think about why am I building a magic mirror at this point I'd already built it like what, am I going to keep it or not and what I urge you to do is go through the modules list the third party modules I'll, I'll link it below they will help you figure out what is unique about your magic mirror that all being said I enjoy my magic mirror even though it has data that I can get on my phone because it's a very uh, pleasant presentation and it's kind of like a little bit of an art piece people walk by it and they're very impressed and it's it's very beautiful and it's very sci-fi cool you know there's something about having a display shine through a mirror so I do enjoy it for that but I think that you should think about it it's probably not going to solve a problem that you can't solve with a cell phone or a smart assistant you know I, I probably have with a uh, um, like an Alexa or a Google device or a Cortana device I probably have three or four different things across my house that can tell me the weather and the stocks and the news so um, just something to keep in mind that you know to kind of pick your pick your battles for the mirror before you start those are my 10 tips from the mirror and a bit of walkthrough about how it works I hope that was useful for you please leave some comments down in the bottom and let me know what you think thanks for watching and until next time I'm Joe Farrow with Geek Toolkit